is a, a censoring organization. Um, tell me how that works. Is the, you, you're not suggesting that um, proprietors phone one another up no. or that many journalists get their copy spiked, as we say? It's um, actually Orwell, <coughs> you may recall, has an essay called Literary Censorship in England, which was supposed to be the introduction to animal form, except that it never appeared in which he points out, look, I'm writing about a totalitarian society, but in free democratic England, it's not all that different. And then he says, uh, uh, unpopular ideas can be silenced without any force. And then he, how, how he gives, two, he gives a two-sentence response, which is not very profound, but captures it. He says two reasons. First, the press is owned by wealthy men who have every interest in not having certain things appear. But second, the whole educational system, from the beginning on through, just gets you to understand that there are certain things you just don't say. Well, spelling these things out, that's perfectly correct. I mean, there, it's the first sentence is what we expand this on. Is, this is what I don't get, because it, it suggests that, I mean, I'm a joke, people like me are self-censoring. No, not right. self-censoring. Uh, there's a filtering system that starts in kindergarten and goes all the way through. Uh, and it it's not, doesn't work 100%, but it's pretty effective. Uh, it selects for obedience and subordination, uh, and especially, I think... That so, so, so stroppy people won't make it to positions be of influence? Behavior problems, or you know, if you read uh, applications to a graduate school, you see that people will tell you he's not, uh, he doesn't get along too well with his colleagues. You, you know how to interpret those things. I, I, I'm just interested in this because <clears throat> I was brought up, like a lot of people, um, probably post-Watergate film and so on, to believe that journalism was a crusading uh, craft and that there were a lot of um, disputatious, stroppy, difficult people in journalism. And I have to say, I think I know some of them. Well, I know some of the best and best known investigative reporters in the United States. I won't mention names, because I'm like, whose attitude toward the media is much more cynical than mine. In fact, <clears throat> they regard the media as a sham. And they know and they consciously talk about how they try to play it like a violin. If they see a little opening, they'll try to squeeze something in that ordinarily wouldn't make it through. Uh, and it's perfectly true that the majority, I'm, I'm sure you're speaking for the majority of journalists who are trained, have it driven into their heads, that this is a crusading a pre uh, profession, adversarial, we stand up against power, a very self-serving view. Uh, on the other hand, in my opinion, I hate to make a value judgment, but the better journalists, and in fact the ones who are often regarded as the best journalists, have quite a different picture, and I think a very realistic one. How, how, can, you, how can you know that I'm self-censoring? How can you I know that you're self-censoring? I'm sure you believe everything you're saying. But what I'm saying is if you believe something different, you wouldn't be sitting where you're sitting.